I remember one time as an assistant principal, I was about to make a call to a parent about an incident that happened with their child. And it wasn't a good phone call that was about to be made. And before I made that phone call, I remember our secretary at the time, her name was Frances O'Gurian. She was absolutely wonderful. And she had kids of her own. And she knew this wasn't going to be a great phone call. And so she said to me, hey, George, before you make that phone call, just remember that you're about to destroy this parent's world, that their kid is everything, as every parent, their kid is everything to them. So just be really cognizant of that. And it wasn't that the kid did something truly horrible at the world we destroyed, but we just love our kids so much that when our own children make a mistake, it, it hurts on a totally different level. And so I actually really committed to making that phone call to ensure the parent knew how much I appreciated their kid, how they had done so many great things before this incident had happened. And that even though a mistake had been made, just like when we were kids, when we used to make mistakes and we've turned out okay, that I still appreciated their child and that I actually really appreciated they owned up to what they had done and, you know, taking responsibility for that. That all mattered to me. And the phone call actually went very well because the parent knew that even though their child had messed up, that I still appreciate it, that I still saw the good. And it really taught me at that moment, I'm so grateful because I actually remember that moment so distinctly in my life with uh, Francis O'Gurian saying that to me, that every phone call that I made when I had to deliver some bad news, I ensured that the parent knew how much I cared about their child, how much it was important to me that I saw the good when something bad had happened. And it also showed me how important it was to work with our community to really be a team together to help support their child to be successful. And I would always get into conversations with families and sometimes it could get a little heated when something was going on. And what I would try to do is recenter the conversation. And I would often say like, Hey, Hey, hey just hold on a second. You and I are here to do, to do, to both do what's best for your child. Correct. And I wouldn't say as a statement, but I'd ask as a question because I wanted that of course, or that, yes, we're, we're here to do that to really say like, Hey, we need to work together as a team because when we work together as a team, we double the chances of success for your child. But when we work in conflict, when we don't actually work together, um, that's when issues tend to arise. And that's where I really appreciate this conversation with Superintendent Chip Jones, because he talked about the importance of uh, his community, really getting to know them and working together to really help the students in his school community. And it it really really resonated with me because I, I distinctly remember how important the school that I grew up in in humble saskatchewan how important it was to to our community how central it was and how my parents worked really closely with the teachers and vice versa to ensure that the best opportunities for me would actually come about so i I really love this conversation i think there's so much more um, than just the community aspect that you'll get out of it but thank you so much for being here thanks for uh joining us for another episode of the innovators mindset podcast Hey everyone, this is George Kroos. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I'm so blessed to have Chip Jones here. He is the superintendent in Cumberland County in Virginia. I will actually be joining them on July 31st. And so we wanted to take this time to kind of get to know each other, learn more about um, each other's history. And I've learned a lot about Chip. He actually was uh, started off as an elementary phys ed uh, teacher, went into middle school, principal, vice principal, central office, and now is currently superintendent. We were going to get into the elementary phys ed because that's what I wanted to, but I was not allowed to do it because I was so terrible at science. And that's a that's, that's still a bone of contention with me. So it's a, yeah, that's, that's, a, a, that's a whole nother podcast. Like, I think. Do I really <laughs> need, do I really need anatomy to teach like grade two dodgeball? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe you do. And maybe that's, maybe we'll find that out on the podcast, but um, Chip has been in education. He's going on to his 26th year. And what's fascinating is that we had one of the things I learned about you in the last podcast, which 
um, we talked about how you worked with, is it Amy, Amy Griffin, right? And Amy who, Griffin. Amy Griffin set you up to be superintendent. You felt the transition was smooth, except for <laughs> you also started basically being a superintendent in July of 2020, which is, you know, thank goodness <laughs> you're still here. Yes. <laughs> you're right. Less so. hair and I've aged. So, yeah. <laughs> right. Right. So um, it, it's wonderful to have you. I'm looking forward. But if you could just tell everyone a little bit about who you are, what you do today, how you got there, it's a great place to start. All right. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm honored to be here. I, you know, I said in the last podcast, I feel like I'm with a celebrity and like uh, being interviewed uh, maybe on one of the morning news shows. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm Chip Jones, uh, superintendent for Cumberland County Public Schools. We are a small rural school division about an hour southwest of Richmond. Um, Actually, if every if the stars align and everything goes well, July one, I will start year twenty here in Cumberland. Wow! And I came in as the assistant principal at elementary school, transitioned to principal, then a director, assistant superintendent, and now ultimately the superintendent. Prior to that, I was a health and PE teacher at Nottaway Schools, um, elementary, and then transitioned to middle, and that's been my pathway so far in education. So. Well, you, yeah. you've been, so if you've been in there, because you said you've been in Cumberland County, you've always been there as an administrator, but you 20 years, that's really been that for that long you've been admin and out of 26. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah. 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 I guess. Yeah. And how, how was that? Like, how was that? Cause I'm, I'm guessing like you were, you know, when you started off as admin, you know, you're how, how is that, you know, how has been that transition, like kind of being in the same place? Um, you know, you know, being that same time, like what have you found through that process of, you know, kind of seeing the same school district, you know, through different, you know, administrative lenses? How, how has that process been for you? You know, it, that's a good question. It's been an interesting process because right. you know, I think back to my assistant principal days and you come in, you're I'm a little I was a little younger then maybe yeah. and a little more hair. I don't know. A few less wrinkles. I don't know. But you come in and you're gung ho and you, you know, as the assistant principal, you're there as a support role, you know, right. where you work with the student, the students and different things such as that. And you start learning about the instruction and doing different things. And then, you know, and the different roles and just transitioning. So the thing that I've seen in Cumberland is it's a great community and I've just seen the progression of education over the last 20 years, how the, mm -hmm. how the community has embraced education and how the school system has grown and just building these relationships, not only with the students, but with their families and with the staff. Right. That has been, that has been pretty powerful to me. And that, that to me that, you know, as a kid, I grew up in a very small town and school was so central to our community. Yes. Right. And I, I feel that's a really important aspect too. And it doesn't matter if you're in a larger city, small town, that school is central. And, you know, based on our ages and, you know, similarities that, that, that was a time, there was a time where basically if I got in trouble at school, that also meant I would get in trouble at home. Right. right? And that, you know, and that, that is, the perception of that has shifted um, in education. And so like, why, why do you see that as such a, like an important aspect of what we do in a community? And like, you know, if, if someone is here from a, maybe a larger center, like how did, how would they embrace that? Like how, how do they create that where maybe there's a little bit more, and I don't know, maybe it's not true. Is there maybe a little more, you know, uh, transient population, you know, maybe different families. Like how, how do you, how do you get, people to embrace that no matter the size of the district. Cause I, I think that's so important that the community feeling. Well, I think what you have to do is, you know, no matter whether you're in a large district or a small district or, or wherever you mm -hmm. work and so forth is you have to treat people because uh, like you'd want to be treated because they right. are people and you right. have to take the time to get to know where you are and mm -hmm. you have to take the time to listen. And then once you do that, I think that starts building a sense of community and you have to offer what you offer. And I always think, I think about it this way, the product that we offer, which is education needs to be quality. Yeah. And there needs to be input and there needs to be buy-in and you have to be transparent about the reasons why you're doing things. And I think when, whether you get along with the family or not, you mm -hmm. know, because 
in the perfect world, everyone gets along, you know, but that doesn't always happen. As long as they know that you have the best interests of their own child at yep. the forefront, things go pretty smoothly. And, you know, with that, it's a blessing and it's a curse almost to have been in the same school division this long and come in and come up to the, to the different jobs yeah. is that, you know, I, I've known in the community and different things, which is good. So people will call me and they might say, Hey, chip, you know, and different things. Now people that haven't been in Cumberland as long, almost get a little offended by that because they right. haven't followed the chain of command and doing different things. Right. But I always say they know me. Does yeah. that make, and so it's. Well, and that, that to me, um, one of the things that I'm really adamant about and, you know, I, I have an opportunity and, you know, joining you and joining school districts like all over the place. And I'm very adamant that I cannot come in there and fix your issues. Like whatever they are, all I can do is share ideas. And the reason I kind of emphasize that is because first of all, I don't like being told what to do. That's, that's really important. And I don't, and I don't want to go in telling anyone what to do just sharing stuff. But you know, as you said, the the reality of is I can share ideas with you, but you have to modify them and figure it out based on the community that you serve. So every place I go into has a totally different community. And ultimately, you have to start with people and that when I first started teaching, one of the things that really, I believed was, I remember this one teacher, and she basically came in two weeks early to the school and what she had done was she would go in and basically she'd come in because there's not really many people there and she would do all her photocopying for the year and it was all done so she didn't have to be you never see their photo you never see her photocopying anything because she wanted to like never have to wait for anyone and so she could tell you on basically october 12th at 10 30 a.m in math this is where the kids will be she's gonna get them there Right. And that was the belief. And that my perception was that's what a good teacher was. Right. They they could get you wherever needed to be. But kind of as I've grown older, I'm I'm like, how can you truly do that if you haven't even met the kids you're teaching this year? And so you have to kind of, you know, know your community, know who they are, know what their strengths are, what their passions are and how you tap into that and that flexibility. And I think I think there's still some of that issue in education where it's like we want all of our kids, no matter what teacher they're with, they have to be at the same place at the same time. And it's like, well, give me some flexibility to actually know the people I'm serving. And so I think that that's a that's a really important aspect. And, you know, when you were, were talking about your role as superintendent, you had been there for a long time. And then you go go into this, um, you know, you go into the superintendency at one of the most, you know, uh, fluctuating times ever in in July 2020. I'm sure there's some uh, excitement. Why? Well, maybe not. I, I guess excitement's a terrible word for that. But maybe some calmness in the sense that, hey, at least the superintendent is someone we know while we're going through this. Did you feel that? Or like, I did. I felt like there know. was a, you know, because they. The school board at the t- at the school board, you know, March fifth. I I remember all this. March fifth, twenty twenty. They announced <laughs> Dr. Griffin's retirement. They announced my appointment, and then March thirteenth, oh, you know, my. we're shutting down schools. And I'm like, wow. hey. And so I think it was. I think it, there was a sense of there was a there was a good comfort level. You know, Dr. Griffin's leaving. We know Chip. He's coming in. So. Right that that is something we don't have to worry about right and but then on the flip side of that you know what i'm thinking is chip all of a sudden like on june 30th you know i've been in this support role an assistant superintendent you know where you you do a lot of things to support the leader yeah but then july 1 now i'm the division leader it's like hey we got to flip this switch off so how does Chip adapt from June 30th to July 1 to maybe right. redefine what it is, his leadership style? Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, and that, you know, so my, one of my mentors, one of the things she said to me, and I've never been superintendent, but she said this to me as a principal, and I'm sure there's a, um, th- there's a correlation to this role, is she said, when you leave that place, um, I want to know what your fingerprints were on that, that I should see not necessarily like you know i think a lot of times uh i've shared the story before there was pictures of the principal in 
the school is at, like basically who who is the principal in the school, and they would have those pictures up, and that was kind of like that. Your legacy was in that portrait, right? It was kind of like that. And I went to that school. I'm like, I don't want my print. I don't want my picture up there. Like that's to me is not important. And I actually um, encourage my staff. Let's get rid of those pictures and let's replace them with kids. And so in that school today, there's pictures of students in the front foyer instead of the principals. And even though there's no picture of me, I'm proud that some of my fingerprints are, I would rather have the pictures of kids up there still instead of a picture of myself. Yes. You know what I mean? And so that's part of the fingerprints. And so, you know, I, I and I'm sure that's the same thing too, right? You have a legacy in following Dr. Griffin into this role but you also got to put your own fingerprints. So like, what, what would you say maybe is like, what's something maybe you did that brought your own kind of style or presence to, to that new, that new role? Well, there again, we have to think about COVID and different things such right, as that right. and the role that's coming in, you know, like yeah, remote learning and doing all that and just making sure that, you know, that students were fed, that teachers had access and they were able, kids were able to get online and do And then, you know, and just different, the support and just making sure that people, people saw the school as a community resource that we will help you. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then all of a sudden we almost, it's almost like starting over again. Now we're back to in-person learning and doing different things. So we've had, we've gone through COVID. So how does Chip Jones, like you said, it, and I agree, I don't need my picture at all. Right. I mean, take it down and whatever. And there are no pictures around here of people, administrators. By I'll the be, way. I'll yeah. be there. Check it out. Right. Yeah, you can check it out. If you <laughs> we might put up a big one, I don't know. Maybe we'll put yours up. I don't know. And um, we'll have a big one of you. And um, so, but I, I hope that my mark is, or that people know that we help kids especially all kids, but especially to at the high school level, get a more understanding of what they want to do when they leave here, that they've had experiences and that they know that they have had opportunities for job shadowing, for career development, right. and just being out and meeting people. And then one of the things that I like that I just, that I'm a firm believer in is, you know, I don't know if you've heard of Stephanie Krause, but, um, She's, she's an author, so she did some work here. And she talked about currencies one time. And one of those, if you know someone, then I, it's your obligation to help connect someone that may need that. Does that make sense? Yep. And so I like to do that. I feel that I want to be a connector to help, you know, if this kid needs this, then we've connected them to this opportunity that I've been a connector to help them get an experience, mm -hmm. to help them grow. And to give, do you mind if I give you an example? Go for it. I'd love to so, hear it. So like, you know, we were partnering with the local community college. So one time, you know, we had a in when in person meetings were um getting back into place. And it's weird to say that. Mm -hmm. I took this opportunity because I had a Zoom and it wasn't enough time to drive back. So I was like, hey, do you have an empty classroom? I could do this Zoom. But they were gonna have this luncheon meeting and they said, Hey, Chip, join us. Okay. So down in one of the counties microsoft has put in all these data centers and they had worked with the community local community college to have these mock data centers to help kids um get certification so eventually they could work with microsoft so i was sitting there cumberland is an hour and a half from this place so i asked the president and there a couple of deans i said well and these are chip terms i said how does cumberland get a piece of this pie right you know, we're an hour and a half away my kids deserve it as much as these others mm -hmm. i don't have a data center you know, and they said, well, I said, well, let's think about this. Let's let's get the right people. Let's let's design this plane. What are we going to do? So on that, to you know, to get to the point last year, we had four students and that's take the class virtually Monday through Thursday. Mm -hmm. Fridays, we transported them an hour and a half to this mock data center and for their hands on portion of the class. And they walked away with some ITF and A-plus certifications at the end of the year. And these kids are now going to the VCU and the George Masons pursuing mm -hmm. computer science. I love does that, that make sense? It and does. it's just the connecting of it where a possibility was not available before. Mm -hmm. And because of just thinking outside the box and saying yes, 
we made this happen. And I remember talking to parents about it. And they were like, "How? Did, what's this going to look like? And the superintendent saying, I have no idea what this is going to look like, but it sounds really fun. Let's yeah. try it and we'll, we'll make it happen. You know, that is, I, I love that we share that. I, there is a very, I felt a very personal uh, connection to that story. And it's part of, you know, what we talked about earlier. It is so important to me. I, I love the school. I love the, the small town that I grew up in. I felt that I had an amazing childhood experience, right? That I loved it. And I remember actually, um, when I was a kid, my parents said, Hey, we want to move to the city. I'm like, no, oh, you can't move to the city. And, and, uh, like you're taking all my friends and I, you know, I was probably 16 or 17 years old and I talked them out of it. And I'm, there's a lot of part. I'm like, there's no way my 16 year old is going to talk me out of moving. Right. right. Like, like I I'm, I'm surprised I had that influence, but maybe, Hey, maybe I'm wrong. Right. When you're, when you have a kid that age, who knows, but there's also this little piece of me that felt like, I wonder how, like what I lost out on because living in the city at that time because it's such a different you know time but we didn't there's no youtube there's none of that stuff there's just you know there's not the the connections that you can make now um you know through social media through all these other places that uh you had then uh, i always like felt like if i was in the city i would have had different opportunities and now one of my passions is working with this with smaller communities saying like you you should not be limited anymore right. like you should you should be able to have that opportunity to grow up in a small town but also not lose out on all the opportunities that if you were to live in a city that you wouldn't have so i like i felt that when you shared that story oh, yeah. there's a there's always that like what there is always that what and for me you know like i said we i was talking about the phys ed thing i was so into sports and i felt you know I never had the same opportunities, the same connections that a city kid who had all the camps, all this, all that, you know, had, but now there, there, there is different opportunities there. And so that I, I love that story because I think yeah. as a, you know, as educators, we become advocates for our kids to make sure that, that they're not losing out on any opportunity because they live in our community or, you know, go to our school. In fact, the opposite. So I, I love that. Um, when you look at, you know, the last, few years and it, you know things and like it, what would you say that you're most proud of for you know your 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 staff um over the last few years kind of going through all the things that they've done i'm very impressed with their resilience mm -hmm. and i'm very impressed with the way that they have embraced family engagement and reaching out to families and getting families more involved in the school. And then in return, I have seen more school spirit, meaning the community embrace the school, you know, like we're the Cumberland County Dukes. So we call it, um, you know, it's Duke pride and we mm -hmm. have their school colors are blue and blue and gold. So I've seen more blue and gold and, you know, and, you know, on social media right now, we're hashtag we are CUCPS because mm -hmm. it takes we and that's all of us that are the Cumberland County School yeah. and doing different things. So I've just kind of seen the school embrace the community and the community embrace the school. And but with that and, you know, you've been in education that takes work and that takes effort just because you celebrate your successes. You acknowledge where you need to grow and you're pretty transparent about that. And mm -hmm. It's just, I don't know. That's, that's what I've been the most excited about. Yeah. And that, that last statement that you made, I think is really important. And that, that seems to be going away a little bit. The sense of like, Hey, it, it's like a lot of people glorify politicians. I just can't, it drives me crazy to be honest with you because I, because a lot of times when politicians make bad decisions, they don't, and own up for it they just pretend it never happened and i'm like like this is you would never want that in a school administrator you'd never want that in a leader that having a vulnerability and showing a willingness like hey we could have done this better we could have like grown here i feel gives you a certain you know um uh you know a, a sense of uh trust that because if everyone knows you screwed up but you can't say it then i don't i don't really trust you right <laughs> like and i'm not saying you screwed up or your community screwed up or anything like that but like saying like, hey, here's here's a place we could we could get better, and then you focus on that, right? Too, and that that to me is is something 
I think is really powerful. And I, I, I try to do that, you know, through my writing, through the stuff that I talk about saying like, Hey, here's things that I'm learning. Here's things that I'm trying to work on and get better. And I just, I, I wish we'd kind of focus on that. That's what we, you know, what we say we want in school leaders. And that's how, you know, we expect people to be. And is that, and maybe I'm totally off on that. I no, no, you're good. I agree. I mean, yeah. if I, I'll own it and, but I will also own it. What, you know, if I've, if things aren't where they need to be, but right. I also, when I do that, the correction. I'm gonna, have, I'm, I'm gonna have a correction in what right. how, what we're going to do move forward and doing different things. I, you know, that's that's just what you do. And, right. Uh, I I I felt you know when I was in men, I felt that I I got more praise when I'd say like ah, I screwed up and here's the here's what I'm gonna do different yeah. than if I was just doing stuff right, <laughs> right? Because yeah. you want people want to see that you're you have some humility and how important that is. I, I love that. All right, so I am going to be joining you on July 31st, and this is like a, this is gonna kind of put me on the spot. All so right. if I'm successful that day, what like what do you hope I I, I bring to your school community on that day? And well, I hope I can do whatever you're about to say. <laughs> you can. I know you can. I mean, right. and doing right. different things. And if we don't, I can just go back and play this recording and say, "Hey, you said this. <laughs> you, um, said this. you said this. It's got to be the truth." And um, but I hope what I hope is what we accomplish on July thirty first is, you know, it's July thirty first, and people are probably thinking, right. "Oh, it's not August yet," even though August is the next day. Right. Um, but that an inspiration and that they what they do on a daily basis matters. And I, yeah. I say this a lot is, you know, since we hear a lot about learning loss and we hear that we didn't do this and we hear that we didn't do that, we can buy every instructional program in America or everything that we have, but nothing helps a kid grow more than a good teacher in front of them on right. a daily basis. And the teacher that's in front of these students, they have, they have, they can do it but they need to feel inspired to do it. Does right. that, does that make sense? So right. it's an inspiration and creative and just that maybe sometimes Chip Jones in your traditional student and you have to reach him in a way that's maybe a little different than, hmm. you know, the Chip Jones next to you and so forth. So it's just, uh, and, and I say that because, and this, this would be get a little personal here for a minute is when I graduated from high school, you know, people, and I said this this year in the graduation remarks to the kids, you know, people brag that they were in the top five. Well, I was in the bottom five of my class, you right. know, school. I did well socially, not well. I just didn't do well <laughs> academically because I didn't apply right. myself the way I could. But I did that to let people know that there's always a, there's always a chance that kid that's sitting in front of you just because they aren't doing well, doesn't mean they're not going to be successful. Right. And successful to me is defined in such different ways. Does that, you know, I don't know if I answered that. Oh, you, yeah. You're good. I'm, I'm going to promise you already. Just base, if that's, you know, if that's what you want to talk, that's going to be, I talk about that anyway. Cause that, that is actually, um, I was with Atlanta, um, public school, Atlanta public schools yesterday. And we were talking and I, I made that very important distinction that we often talk about our smartest kids but actually some of our smartest kids are terrible academically. Yes. And part of your role is to help them bring out that brilliance. It's not to make, because what we really want to focus on is not getting all kids good at the same thing, but helping all kids become good at something right. and helping them find that passion and talent. So that, that totally lines up with what I'm going to share that day too. So I'm, I'm really excited to join you all. And uh, it, it, it's, it, it, it you know, I love coming to Virginia. You know, I've been there several times and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. So um, I'm looking forward to your staff, to meeting with your staff, to like hanging out with you and uh, connecting. And it's been it's just been an, an honor to talk to you. Today. I'm excited. I mean, it's just one of those things, you know, it's like the stars aligned when I reached out to you, your yep. email popped up and I said, hey, let me email. And then, you you know, we talked in different things. It's just like that was the only day like I had open that week. Too. I know. See, I, know. I mean, it's, you know, it's You'll love, love it. it. You'll love right. Cumberland. I can't wait to see you all. So, Chip, thanks for taking the time today. It was, it was wonderful getting to know you. So, uh, I'll I'll see you. I'll see you soon. Absolutely. All right. And shout out, shout out, we're going to give him one last shout out to all of Cumberland County. And Absolutely. I watching this, so, one of these. I love it. All right. And thanks everyone for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.